In this video, we're going to talk about some of the project helps that you'll need for the projects found in Module 4. I'm just going to begin by inserting a watermark. So we're going to go to the Design tab here at the top, and what we want here is in Page, Background, Watermark. And they have a lot of predefined things, but I believe in this project, you're going to go ahead and have to put in a custom watermark. So what I did was I clicked that drop down here, and I clicked Custom Watermark down here at the bottom and it has no watermark selected but what we want is a picture watermark so we'll select that bullet point and we'll click select picture you have a few options for this project they provide you with the picture that they want you to have so we'll go ahead and click browse and this could be in a number of places this could be in your documents if you moved it there if you put it in your pictures it could be there or it could be in your downloads if you just click the link so be mindful of where you save that We'll go ahead and use our mirror logo here for that. We'll double click. And you have different uh, scaling options and you can wash out the logo. We'll unclick that just to see it more clearly on this screen. We'll click OK. And notice it went ahead and it pasted that image on your document. Let's go ahead and look at changing some bullets to Bullets are a great way to add emphasis in your document, but something cool that you can do is you have the defaults here but you could change this to a picture so we'll go ahead and click uh, the bullets here and there are a number of ways to do this but we'll click the drop down here at the top and we'll go ahead and click define new bullet and you have options for symbols pictures and fonts and again the projects from uh, the project provides you with what you want so you'll select pictures browse and we'll use our mariner logo again but it'll tell you which one to use we'll click ok and we'll click OK and look it went ahead and posted that for us. Let's go ahead and talk about putting a box border around text. Let's go ahead and look at roses here. We'll go ahead and select the text and in the project it might, it's going to ask you to go ahead and put a box border around the text. So let's go ahead and click design here at the top and what we want to do is go to the page background section. We want to click page borders. Now by default it puts you on page border on that tab and that will affect your entire page. But what we want to do is go to the borders tab over here on the left and you have a lot of options here. Box, shadow, 3D, custom. We'll go ahead and just click box here for this. And here in the style, you don't. I don't believe you need to change it but it should be pretty obvious this is a solid line. You have the dashed and then you have dotted and dashed. Let's go ahead and choose a color here and we'll just go ahead and choose blue. And we'll put I don't know three point and notice that it changed the color and the thickness now something else it's going to have you do is put shading behind your text or in that box and so right now there's no fill but we could easily just go ahead and choose this red and we'll click OK and notice it went ahead and did that now something else you're going to be asked to do is to go ahead and change the left and right margins with this text still selected we can go ahead and click paragraph here at the top and in our indentation we could change this. Let's do 2.5. We'll do it for both the left and the right, 2.5. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And notice that it went ahead and brought that box in, and it just fits around the, the word roses. Something else I want to talk about is inserting a text file. Now this is something you've done in Gmetrics and in other projects, but I want to see I want you to see something here. So let's go ahead and type text just to kind of give us a header. And we're going to go to the insert tab here at the top and we're going to go to the text group over here. Now we have object, but what we want is object drop down, text from file. The file that I'm looking for is not here and that's what I want you to see. We need to go down here to the bottom and click all word documents and click all files. And this is what I'm looking for here. We'll go ahead and click insert and it went ahead and inserted that text. Let's go ahead and look at SmartArt. SmartArt is awesome to use in a document if you can. There's a lot of cool features. When you select your smart art, when I went ahead and selected the outer section, so I selected it all. Um, you have smart art tools here at the top, and there's a lot of things you can do here, such as colors. Now, I want to be helpful to you. If it says Accent 3, you can guarantee that something that you're looking for in Accent 3 is here, such as th this one that said uh, the transparent gradient, you got the uh, gradient range. This one's gradient loop. So be mindful that if it says accent three, it's in this section. You're just gonna have to hover to find that. You also have the option of going ahead and changing the different styles. And so um, maybe it says to add the flat uh, scene to this. If you're not sure, again, hover. It'll tell you what you need. Let's go back to our roses text here at the top. And 
something we have this text and it, it's doing its thing but maybe we want to spread out the text just a little bit one of the cool things you can do is is expand or condense the text to add emphasis so we're on the home tab we're on the font group dialog box and what we want to do is click that advanced tab here at the top now there's some predefined things that it's doing for you but one of the things you can do is right now it's condensed we can change it to normal or expanded let's go ahead and do expanded and we'll do I don't know five it's gonna look crazy but we'll go ahead and do it and notice it the spacing in between the letters is there I'll click con uh, control Z to show you the difference see how it pushed it all back and so you might be asked to expand or condense text let's look at adding a page break students often have a hard time being able to see if a page break has been inserted or any type of break and so I want to encourage you to note that this paragraph button here the show hide paragraph marks if I click that notice that there are some symbols that appear on my document these are called non printing symbols but it helps you identify what's going on in your document like this is a return here in your document so with that I'm gonna go ahead and insert a page break so I'm gonna go I'm gonna click insert here at the top and then I'm gonna click page break and notice everything dropped down this one was pretty obvious but sometimes it's not so obvious and I've seen students put three or four continuous breaks in there and really kind of throw off their page but I can easily see that there's a page break here because I have that show hide mark if I uncheck that notice it disappears and it can be hard to see but if you're ever unsure what's going on in your document I encourage you to click that show hide button here at the top we've gone ahead and we've made some formatting to the roses title maybe I don't like what I've done and I just want to remove all formatting that is simple to do we're on the home tab paragraph group I'm sorry the font group and if you look right here this a with the little eraser if I click this button all of my formatting disappears the the style the colors that were added the box and it went ahead and it removed that now maybe I want to make this the second subheading like this text right here something cool that I love is the format painter if I have that text selected and I click the format painter here maybe I want to apply that to a roses or a, a bunch of different things if I click that and I just click here notice it went ahead and it applied that formatting to that text earlier in the video we went ahead and we changed our bullets here to have the Mariner logo now we have a bunch of bulleted points here but maybe I want these points in alphabetical order right now it's not so I went ahead and I selected my bullet points we're on the home tab we're in the paragraph group and if you look here you have a to z it's called the sort button we'll go ahead and click that which will bring this sort text it's asking you how you want to do it uh, paragraphs for this is fine we'll go ahead and leave it in ascending and we'll go ahead and click ok notice it went ahead and it sorted my points for me in this project you're going to have to do a few things with tables so let's go ahead and look at this first thing you're going to be asked to do is to go ahead and merge one of the lines so when i've gone ahead and, and selected the entire first row here see how it's all shaded showing that I've selected and what we want to do is go to layout here at the top and in the merge group we want to go ahead and click merge I notice that becomes one cell and we can go ahead and type in a heading and while we have that here it kind of looks a little bit odd in the bottom right hand uh, we could do a lot of things we could change it to the top we could do this the exact center of this cell uh, you want to go ahead and play around with this something else you're going to be asked to do is to go ahead and sort a table so let's go ahead and select this right here school all the way through to Riverdale High School because we want it in alphabetical order instead of by student to uh, total student population and we'll go ahead and click for this my my header my list has header row which is the school total number and then we have this we'll leave it the same we'll go ahead and click OK and notice it went ahead and sorted them by alphabetical order instead of by student population something else you can do here is there's a lot of uh, with the table selected you have the table tools here at the top and you have some auto fit features here the thing you're going to be asked to do is to go ahead and change the width of a column and for example this right here 1.51 is not wide enough for some of these uh, cells so let's go ahead and just change the width manually you might also be asked to distribute the, the columns or rows evenly so let's go ahead and select this I want to be careful that I select just my table and if I right click here I can put down distribute rows evenly what I did was I right click the table to get this or I can do distribute columns evenly and we'll go ahead and do columns so you can see that let's go ahead and shade this header right here uh, Lee County Schools and 
there are if you go to the design tab here at the top we have the shading here you have all the standard colors you can make your own let's go ahead and make this green you also have the table styles which i don't believe you have to do for this project but it's an easy way to change the the color scheme of your table and then finally let's go ahead and look at putting a formula into our table let's go to the layout tab here at the top and we'll go ahead and click formula it's already populated with some from above we'll go ahead and click ok and it went ahead and it populated this line i know the table's a little bit jumbled but it went ahead and it added all of these up so let's say that uh, dunbar had an increase of the number of students let's go to 24. And when i click off notice that this number did not populate but it's all we have to do is right click this and click update field and notice it went ahead and populated that number for me.